Good morning everyone, welcome to the garage. Jordan here from Artisan Electrics and today's little project is a bit of a garage rewire. Following an EICR, basically we discovered a few things that were not great. Um, so I recommended to just tidy it all up and uh, rejig it. So I'll show you what we found and then I'll tell you what we're gonna do. As always, if you like my videos, hit a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on future videos and hit the notification bell then you're notified every time I post a new video. Let's go. So this is the garage and as you can see it's kind of a bit of a hodgepodge of stuff. It's really weird actually. So we've got this light here which is working. And then we've got like four old fluorescent lights which are not doing anything. And then we've got this funny old baton holder which is just wired off this junction box here, can you see that? <laughs> On a bit of um, single insulated cable. Then we've got this light switch, which is just bodged in with a bit, um, on, you know, in the normal metal back box. And actually that does seem to turn on these other fluorescent lights, but you know, they're all a bit hideous, old, rusty, noisy. So definitely gonna sort that out just try and get rid of those and just rewire the whole lot basically. Um, over here we've got a couple of light switches. So this one does the main lights there. And then this one does an outside light, which is just here, but it's not working I don't think. Oh yeah, it is, but the switch is upside down. So I need to sort that out. Um, obviously, you know, the cables here, just completely loose, not clipped up or anything. So I'm gonna run some uh, conduit in there. Bit of flexi for Nick Bundy. <clears throat> now I'm gonna put solid conduit in. So just a bit of PVC solid conduit just to protect the cables going up. And then obviously they're already clipped up in place so we can reuse some of that. This armoured cable goes across here um, and then down and goes into the ground. So I'm thinking it might be actually a separate feed for the lights than it is for the sockets here. There's another feed that comes up here and across and goes to this socket. And then again, you know, that's loose. And then from this socket, you've got a big hole in the side here a bit of one mil twin and earth feeding this switch fuse connection unit which then goes up and i'm not quite sure what it does actually okay no that does that does feed all the lights so this i'm going to change to metal clad but a new metal clad double socket in a bit of conduit to run up to protect that twin and earth cable um and then i guess we've got to find out what that outgoing armored does um, but probably just can re-terminate that. I'm guessing it does some kind of other garden lights or something. It's all good fun, shall we say. Um, this junction box here, obviously gonna have to redo that with a Wargo box or something. That switch is kind of a bit pointless having it there, so I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm just gonna put two LED battens in here, six foot LED battens. They'll be nice and bright and uh, you know, they'll be perfectly adequate for this kind of garage space. So I've got the Ansel LED battens to go in. Um, hopefully I can just rip out most of this old wiring and just start from scratch really. I think that's gonna be the, the best and easiest thing to do. So I will get started and let you know how I'm getting on. Right, so interesting little update for you. This switch is actually a two-way switch with the house lighting. There's a light outside the porch on the house, which is about 20 meters down that way. And this switch switches both the light out here, this one, and the light outside the porch of the house in a sort of two way fashion. So this is what that armored cable does. It actually goes all the way back to the house to do two way switching, which is just quite unusual really. So I'm going to need to keep this as uh, kind of as it is. I'm going to need, need to keep a, a one gang switch there. 
and then a separate one gang switch for the internal garage lights. Um, so I'll probably just put a new switch on here, um, but I'll put it straight down here so that you know, it seems a bit weird to have this cable kind of going across at an angle. Um, so I'll rejig that move, put a new switch there, and then I'll, I will do a bit of conduit work to put this in with like a, an end box here where the cable goes through, something, something like that. So end box there, bit of conduit across at an angle and then down into the top of the box. Um, something like that should do the trick. At the moment, it just goes into a grommet in the bottom and it's, you know, it's not got any kind of IP rating or anything. And this whole switch is a little bit rickety and old, so we'll sort that out. All right, I just wanna show you this because this is quite hilarious. I'm just taking this first cover off. I mean, this is pretty old and rusty, this old thing anyway. But look how they fixed it up. They've literally fixed it with nails, just bent the nails over. So I can literally just pull this off. Let's see if I can just yank it off the ceiling, basically. Yeah, there we go. That was easy. Right, so we have ripped out all those lights and they came out so easily because most of them were literally just nailed on. So I could just literally pull them off the ceiling, which was great. Um, so that's revealed a little bit more how all this works. Basically that junction box was just to do the switch line down to the switch and then all the link cables to all the various lights basically. So I'm gonna rip that junction box out now, rip out all these link cables for the various lights, uh, probably keep the cable that's going to the switch. Um, well, I might just redo that actually, it's a pretty easy run, it's just straight across there and down, so I might just rewire that as well and then it's done. Um, obviously we've got feed into this, which we'll need to keep, and new junction box, and then two new light fittings, one here and one there. Um, some of these lights were just so badly wired in. The cables were just going into the back through the metal holes and some of the cables were quite badly damaged actually. Like you can see this one. Can you see that? That was just from the metal in the back of the fitting. It had scraped off the insulation of the cable. So it's definitely good that we, we're rewiring all these, getting them all sorted out. So I'll rip that out now and then start rewiring. Now, I know you guys kind of think that I just spend all my time slating DIYers, uh, but I'm sorry, but here's another one. Look at this. I mean, this is, it's, it's a classic DIY job. Um, this, you know, the earths are twisted together in the back of the junction box here. You've got, everything's just shoved in, like absolutely jammed in really badly. And then this, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, but that screams DIY to me. And the same as this, you know, putting a metal back box with a light switch on, you know, that's clearly meant to be flushed into the wall. It's just somebody who didn't have a clue what they were doing, basically. Um, but hey, it works, and it has worked for however many years, and nobody's died. Doesn't mean it's safe, though. It's just classic and we see this kind of thing over and over again, particularly in sheds and garages where people seem to feel like it's slightly less bad if you do your own electrics in your garage than in your house because, you know, if the garage burns down, nobody's going to die. Uh, <laughs> anyway, rant over. Sorry, sorry guys, but rant is not over. I've literally just taken off this switch and look at that. I mean, come on. That is just ridiculous. Why? I don't, I just don't get it. Why would anyone do that? So you've got this connector block, which, you know, the cables have not been stripped back properly and then the earths have just been twisted together. And then the connector block to extend the wires because presumably they were too short, even though you've got a junction box just here. So they could have just put a new piece of cable in. 
I don't even know how they managed to fit the switch cover on, to be honest, with that huge connector block in the back. It's like 50 amp connectors or something, you know? And then obviously the cables where they go into the box, well, obviously there's no grommets. And this one in here, it's just going into that tiny little hole where the, um, behind the lug. So, you know, the cables are just being scratched to death, being put in holes like that. Yes. Uh, sorry, not sorry, but DIY electrics. Uh -uh. <laughs> Right, so now we've got rid of all that nastiness, awfulness that was there. Um, I've just left the two cables in. One is the switch cable going down to the switch over there. The other one is the feed in. They're actually in good condition and they are clipped up. So as far as they are clipped up okay so far, I'm going to just neaten the clipping a little bit on parts of them and just leave the existing cabling in there. I've got this little uh, Wago box uh, light, which is for lighting. I'm going to screw that up there and then use that to do the connections for the light fittings. So we've got feed in, switch line, and then we'll have a feed out, which will go to uh, one of these light fittings and then we'll link out of that light fitting into the other light fitting. And these are the lights that I've got. These are the um, Ansel top line six foot LED battens. I use these a lot. They're just great quality, reasonably priced, really nice and bright. So what I'm going to do is um, Pop one of these up about about like that, um, somewhere in the middle of the room there, and then the other one, just the other side of that hatch probably. So they're sort of equidistant from the centre of the room. That hatch is about centre, so I'll probably just pop one the other side of there, both in a nice straight line. Um, I'll just clip twin and earth up to the fittings, and then use a compression gland in the end of the fitting to bring the cables in, that'll be fine. Um, do that junction box, I've got to put a metal clad switch use connection unit on over there to replace that plastic switch use connection unit, put a bit of conduit for the drop down on there just so that the cable's protected when it's against the brick walls. Same over there, re-terminate that metal socket, put a new metal clad double socket on and sort out those switching and then we'll be good to go. So I'll mount these up first, get these wired, then I'll do that junction box, and then I'll do the stuff on the walls. So we're getting there now. So two light fittings are up. That one I've put the cover on. Um, that The cable comes into that and then out of this one to this one. And that's the end of line. So I've left the cover off that one just so that I could do some testing on that one uh, before I liven it all up. They're nice fittings. These have just got push fit connectors in here and there's plenty of space in them. Um, they're really nice and bright. They're basically just an LED strip inside this cover. So it's super simple with just an LED driver inside, but they're really reliable. I've not had any problems with them and you get different sizes. You've got four foot, five foot, six foot and single and twin. So obviously the twins are much brighter uh, LEDs inside. And that's what they look like when they're kind of finished with the covers on. You can get the sort of IP65 rated versions as well, which have kind of opal diffuser type thing on the front um, but in this case I just chose to get these ones. Junction box is done so that's gone in fairly nicely. I like these little uh, Vargo box lights they're tiny designed for lighting you can't get a lot of cables in them but they're really nice and neat 
So that's all done, cables clipped along and then compression glands into the fittings. A couple of tools to mention, obviously um, a little shout out to my Tools for Sparks channel. I'll leave a link in the description if you've not subscribed already to my Tools for Sparks channel. I post regular videos there about tools for electricians. And one of the things I've done a video about is this. I'm going to call this the monkey light because it can literally hang off anything. It's got magnets all over it and so you can just magnetize it to something, you know, just click it on. So in this case, I've just magnetized it onto this bike spoke of this bike wheel just to be able to do my junction box, you know, but anything that's metal, just bang it on there and then, you know, and it's got a magnet on the back as well. So you can magnetize it to the back. It's just super good. Unilite stuff is great. And I'm not being paid to say that. It's just, you know, I just love their products. Um, and then what was the other thing I wanted to mention? Oh yeah, my DeWalt line laser. I've just made a video about this on my Tools for Sparks channel. So head over there and have a look at that. This, oh no, it's not in here, but that's the case for it. And this is the bad boy with a green laser. It's really, really cool. So, um, yeah, I've just used this to basically put a, a line on the ceiling to get my light fittings lined up. So, you know, I know it's not 100% necessary, but it's a nice luxury to have a laser line. It just easily allows you to see exactly where to put your screws in. And uh, yeah, I just, I love it. Super bright. And you can mount it on a, um, a tripod if you want as well. I've got the tripod from DeWalt, but I don't tend to use it that much. You can just pop it on the floor usually like that. And then it'll do you a nice line. So yes, those are the tools for the day. Anyway, uh, next stop is going to change these light switches sort those out, put a bit of conduit up for that one, tidy that all up, just reclip um, this cable a little bit. I'll probably flip it over to the other side of the beam so that it goes in a straight line along there and then flips over at the end and drops into a bit of conduit down to the conduit box. Sort out that one as well, but I've got to isolate that back at the house. And then it's just a case of doing these. This is the switch fuse connection unit which we've got for the lights in here. So I'm going to take that off and put a new metal clad one on but I've got to pick one up from the wholesalers because I didn't have one on the van. And then this armoured I'm literally just going to re-terminate it into a new metal clad double socket and put a little conduit um, 20 mil uh, through Coupler, that's it, 20 mil coupler between the two boxes so that everything's kind of protected. Run that PVC cable up in a bit of black PVC conduit as well, just so it's protected on the wall because they've got bikes. As you can see, they've got lots of bikes and they're gonna be hanging a bike up on here, for example. So it could easily bash against the cable and damage it. On the ceilings, I'm not so worried because there's not much that can really damage the cables on the ceiling. So I've just run it, I've just clipped the twin and earth directly to the ceiling in this case because it's just on wooden um, joists so we'll jump on and change this switch now so in terms of quality for mk um, accessories I find them to be the best um, for metal clad and for plastic to be honest I've found them to be, to be the best MK have actually stopped making consumer units now which I'm quite pleased about because the, their consumer units were pretty rubbish quality but they do make good um, good accessories so it seems like that's the kind of focus that they're taking now really is it's more for the accessory market rather than rather than the switch gear and consumer unit market what i'm going to do here i've sleeved these up brown i know it's you know maybe a bit ott but i've just done it anyway i'm just doing a flying lead that will go from the back box to the front plate just to make sure that even when you take the front plate off, it's still earthed. I think that's important to do in these kind of situations. 
Um, and I'm going to ferrule it so that it avoids the wire being damaged by the brass screw in the terminal. So I tend to use 1.5 mil green and yellow wire for that with my Nipex um, ferrule crimpers. And just do the same for the other end. I tend to leave the wire a little bit too long, then I'll ferrule it and then I'll cut it short. I don't know what you what you guys do, let me know in the comments. But I just find it slightly easier to do it that way. Also, I think you can get different length ferrules, which would be quite handy in some situations because sometimes these ferrules are just a little bit too short. So let me know what length ferrules you prefer to use and where do you get your different length ferrules from? So that's connected in, ferruled in there, and then I'm just going to do the same into the back box. Just give that a little pull to make sure that doesn't come loose, and that's, that's fine. So then I tend to double these over if possible, especially when there's only one wire in each terminal. I think it's good practice to do that. So double the wires over. And then with these switches, you've got the SP terminal. So, um, sorry, you've got the one way terminal. So, um, if you are doing it as a one, just a one way switch, then you should use the common as the permanent life. So, that's the red wire usually. And then the black wire, which is obviously sleeved up, has to indicate that it's a life conductor goes into the one-way terminal. And that means that when you put the switch the right way up, like that, that is on and that is off, usually. Um, you can check it with the continuity tester, just to be sure. So I can do that now if I go on the common terminal here. And then that should be off at the moment, which it is. If I flick that down now. That's on, so so that is the right way. Now it's funny because in different countries they have different uh, thoughts about the way a switch should be. In England, this is off and that is on, or in the United Kingdom, I should say, uh, off and on. I presume it's the same in Ireland or Scotland, or whatever. But in some countries, like when I was in, I think Croatia and the Netherlands, they have it this way as off and that way as on, which like really confused me but that's the way they kind of get used to it. Let me know in the comments in your country which way is, is on. Is that off or is that off? <laughs> I'd love to know. It's just confusing. I uh, got the old green line laser just to laser up the conduit there so that's nice and level. And uh, I've just got to get this dust out so I'm just gonna blow that, uh, brush it out with my dustpan and brush and then blow the excess off with my Opola air duster. Great little thing that that air duster, I must say. Right, so I'm just putting this conduit on the wall here now. Um, and just to avoid tempting the Nick Bundy effect from happening, <laughs> where uh, he, if you haven't seen it, basically Nick put in a load of. Um, Flexi conduit, like loads and loads of flexi conduit to take all the cables from a um, the house to a cons new consumer, a brand new consumer unit, and it was just like flexi all along the walls to run all the feeds for the different circuits, and it just it just didn't look great to be honest. Hey, but the thing is, like we all live and learn, you know, through these kind of experiences. So uh, he's taken quite a ribbing for it, so he's never going to forget that. But, you know, I've been there and all the other YouTubers have been there. So funny, though, me and Nick have got a bit of a thing going on at the moment because um, we're both in a bit of a race to hit 20,000 subscribers. I am, as we speak, up to 17,500 and he's 17,600. So I'm almost about to overtake him. Um, and our goal for this year, both of us had the goal of hitting 20,000. It looks like we're both going to do it. But it's a question of who does it first. 
because I was way behind him before. I mean, I've been doing YouTube videos technically since 2016. He only started and like within months he'd already like overtaken me in terms of subscribers and stuff. But since I've been putting out more videos, my videos have kind of, my subscriber count has just shot up and I've ended up catching up with him again. So yeah, we'll see who wins in probably about six to eight weeks time. I should think I should hit about uh, 20,000 hopefully. This hammer is quite good, by the way, if this um, Weeha electrician's hammer. So that's the great thing about this laser level is that you can literally just drop it like that. It's so bright and then you know wherever you want to put your fixings you can just drill your holes straight onto the laser line so in this case i'm going to probably do one here and then every third brick something like that one two three two three one two three that'll be about right now let me know what your thoughts are about installing um fire fixings for this in my mind, it's not necessary because it's not in a house, it's in a garage. Um, and also, just these drops here, the rest of the cable is supported by the joists anyway. So even if there was a fire here, there's no way that this cable's gonna fall down because it's going over the joists. But, uh, you know, let me know if you think I'm wrong. Right, well we are just about done here. Those switches are sorted out now and as you can see behind me we have light. It's got these lovely bright light fittings so it's much better. All that horrible old cabling is gone. And over here I'll just show you we've got the switch fused connection unit and brand new MK double socket here. Looks smart, conduit running up just to protect the cables on the walls. So it's used connection unit with a five amp fuse for the lighting. And then we've redone this two way switch over here for the outside light on a different circuit, obviously. So we've kept in a separate box and I've just run a little bit of conduit up here with a stop end box. I decided to do it straight rather than do a kick on it. So I've just chopped out the wall slightly behind it and then drilled through at an angle so that the cable comes into here and I've just sealed the hole with a bit of silicon. So that's all sealed up. So good to go, not a bad little job. Let me know your thoughts in the comments as always, and if you like my videos, don't forget to hit a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and don't forget to click the notification bell because then you'll get notified every time I post a new video. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.